Swimming. We'd, we'd like to start off by performing a song called Happily Ever After. Here we are in the future, here we are in the future, and it's bright. Nothing to fear, no one to fight. I can't believe we've come so far. Happily ever after, here we are. I'd like to thank uh, Jeremy, aka Scott Tune Network, and the live Scott Tune Network band. And I'd like to welcome to the stage the voice of Pearl, Dee Dee Magno Hall. them a story? Oh, yes. Once upon a time I only lived to be a pink diamond service Till the day the two of us snuck down to be on this planet's surface We became a fantasy And I was sure she set me free But in the end I guess I After love and loss and all the tears that I cried, I find that here we are in the future. Here we are in the future and it's bright. Nothing to fear and no one to fight. I can't believe we've come so far. Happily ever after, here we are. Soldier, Sapphire's deadly fate was set until Ruby's wife rushed in to hold her. Suddenly they were fusing. Beautiful, strange, confusing. And there I was, a bundle of questions, so naive. And if you said to me, I never would have believed, but here now, here we are in the future. Nothing to fear, no one to fight. I can't believe we've come so far. Happily ever after, here we are. And now I'd like to welcome to the stage the voice of Amethyst, Michaela D. I had a pardon. I came out late and alone. Nothing but my home. But I know now exactly when I'm supposed to be. And it's a part of this family. If I could just
There's one more person that I'd like to welcome to the stage. Oh. The voice of Spinell, Sarah Styles. Oh, oh my goodness, look at that crowd. Oh. Oh. And you're all here for me. Well, well, I mean, I think they're here to see us too. Just me. <laughs> You know, you know what? Let her have it. Let her, uh, have, it. Let her, let her have it. I just. I'm gonna take it. Hi, everybody. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you all. I can't actually really see you all, but I can hear you. <laughs> Do you want to hear my opening number? <laughs> song called Drift Away.
counting the seconds, standing alone as thousands of years go by. Happily wondering night after night, is this how it works? Am I doing it right? Happy to listen, happy to stay, happily watching her drift. gone on without you finally something finally news about how the story ends she doesn't exist now survived by her son and all of her brand new friends isn't that lovely isn't that cool and isn't that a few more songs for you. Um, next we'd like to do Isn't It Love? Let's try this. Help me with the words. Suddenly hot, I move. Suddenly cool, I move. Suddenly a genius sound. No, I'm joking. I want you guys to have fun, so let's sing along. I think you might know this one. Let's try it. <laughs> it's our first time doing this together, guys. I've been here for three minutes. I don't know. Let's test that theory, let's go. Oh, when a difficult day goes by, keeping it together is hard, but that's why you got to 
I know there are a lot of questions, a lot of emotions flowing in here, so I think we should get the discussion started. But uh, how about that music? Okay, first things first, you guys need to know some important things. One, yes, Famith is for life. Steven Universe, the movie, releases on DVD Tuesday, November 12th. Get, get that in your brain, Tuesday, November 12th. And you guys, it features exclusive, never, be seen, never before seen content. I can't tell you what that content is, but you should see it so then it will be seen. Um, <laughs> Steven Universe, the movie soundtrack. You can bust all this in your ears on the reg. will drop on vinyl Friday, November 15th. Yep, 
Yep. In a regular and deluxe version. Yeah. Yeah. So deluxe. And it's available at all major retailers. So isn't that fun? <laughs> okay. Rebecca, should we hop into it? Let's yeah, do it. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys want to talk about um, the experience of the movie? Because this was a little different than, um, you know, recording episodes. So. Yeah. Well, this was such an ambitious project. And one of the big differences was that music was involved from the very beginning. When we were doing our earliest writers' meetings, our composers, and I'd like to give a shout out to our composers, Ivy and Sarashu. <laughs> yeah. They were involved at the earliest stages. Uh, and so music and story are totally integrated in this project. Uh, and then I also just was so excited to write music for all of you, because you're so incredible. Uh -oh. You're incredible, Rebecca. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. What, um, what would you say... So I got so awkward, because I was like, there are so many feelings inside of me. Um, <laughs> What, what would you say was the biggest challenge with the movie? Oh my God, all of it. The whole, oh. <laughs> uh, the whole thing. Uh, but I think that that was a big challenge, was making sure that musically everything was informing the story. And then just doing something on this scale, which is it's the biggest scale that we've ever done. Um, uh, it was also really tough to find someone to play Spinell, because she's a very complicated character. Uh, so we got extremely lucky. <laughs> So, give it up for Miss Sarah Styles. So, ha Sarah, how did you come into the fold of this project? Um, I, I got, and it was just like a normal animation audition that I got from my agent in New York, and they said, you know, this Steven Universe, um, they're doing this um, movie musical. I did know that, and and uh, they, you know, they're they're looking for. I think the breakdown was like a psychotic Betty Boop or something close to that. Tell and I was me like, more. Oh, I, I, I never wrote exactly that. What did but you write? I, I Wait, because it was so great. The description was like, I felt like, oh yeah, I, I think I get that. I wrote uh, like pages and pages and pages about who she was. Uh, <laughs> right. That's how they boiled it down. They boiled then. it down to that. I, but no, it was, I had, there, were, there was a lot of information. But well, I, I just have to say, just I, I didn't realize what I was getting into with this, and I didn't actually understand that she was such a important part of the movie. I really thought I was gonna go in and record for one day and then be gone. And then I got like the first act of the movie and I called my agent and I'm like, I think I have a lot to do in this movie. <laughs> um, but I will tell you, I am like, I'm deeply uh, appreciative of this project, and Rebecca, I think you've written such an important movie, and it's such a beautiful show, and I, I, I was not familiar with Steven Universe before this movie, and I'm so glad it is now a part of my life. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Thank you, Sarah. overcome with feelings. I feel like I'm gonna get into that Pearl meme where she's like rocking herself. <laughs> um, I'm not crying. <laughs> well, so, so I mean, y you were, you recorded with Zach in the booth, right? Yeah, we did, we, we did a couple scenes too, but we definitely did found together. Yes, and yes. some of the scene work, which was so cool because that doesn't usually get to happen. So. And then Estelle and Didi, who, who were you recording with in the booth for the movie? Are there moments that stick out to you when we were recording? Oh, well, um, sometimes we were all together, and then sometimes we were not. <laughs> it's all so clear now. <laughs> I remember we did Happily Ever After all together. That we did. Really that was fun. It's always fun to be in the booth together, to feed off of each other's energy and then get the flow line from Rebecca. And it's just a, it's a dream job, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I love you! <laughs> and this was cool for us because actually Rebecca voice directed through the whole movie, which is a little bit different from the episodes. Right, that is different. Um, yeah, I, I often, when we do episodes, uh, I, I previously had a voice director, but we would stop and I would direct all of the songs. And because the majority of the movie is sung, I voice directed the entire thing. Um, which was which was great. It was so nice. 
Well, it worked out. You did a really good job. I'm sure you already knew that, though. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sorry, can, let, let's, let's backtrack to a, a Spinel question. We have a fan question. Um, this is something I've wondered, too. Do the other diamonds have their own Spinels? <laughs> um, oh, I, I, re ooh. I really like that question. Well, they don't necessarily have the same need or desire for that. But if they did, I like the thought that their gems would be shaped like a club and a spade. <laughs> That's a good one. Pass me that water. Do you need? Are you parched? I just, just water? in case. Are you, are you drinking that to do a spit take? It was what? like a delayed reaction. I'm just gonna hold this just in case. Okay. Just in case. okay. Um, so Rebecca, the style of Spinel is a little bit different than some of the other characters you've created. So what, what was your inspiration for Spinel? Um. <laughs> Well, there are many, many things. Well, for, for one, I really wanted to make a rubber hose cartoon, a, a 30s-styled cartoon. Um, I'm a huge fan of that particular style of animation, and, but I didn't want to just do it. I wanted it, to have to, I wanted it to be a part of who the character was. So the fact that she's been frozen in time and that she doesn't quite know how to interact with modern cartoon characters is actually part of her story. Um. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Encino Man, but yeah, I, with I, Spinel. <laughs> just kidding. Um, you know, I really believe in the, the medium as the message, and as someone who loves animation, that was really exciting to me. But she was also based off of a stuffed animal, of a, a stuffed rabbit that I left in the garden when I was a kid. And when I, Did when I found it later, um, it, was, it was sun damage. The, the, it was upside down, and the sun had faded its belly, and, and when I found it, um, it, it wasn't that it was worse, it was just different. And I, it was the first time I realized that something could change without me, uh, without me realizing just, just, just over the course of time. And it really stuck with me. I wrote a song about it for Adventure Time. Uh, uh, called, called Everything Stays. And, and then partway through the, the movie, as I was working on Spinell, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, oh my God, this is, I'm writing about this again. Like, this is really... <laughs> This really stuck with me. Um, so she's very much based off of that. Wow. Thank you. Well, did Rabbit have a name? Um, no. no. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so something that really defines this movie is the music. So what was it like co collaborating with all these different people in the music business, including our very special Estelle over here, um, to make this film? It was, it was amazing. I, I couldn't have done it without Estelle and, with, and without the help. At the, at the very beginning, well, we had been, every time there would be a, a song, a Garnet song, I would always ask Estelle for advice and, I, you know, it, just to, for expertise. But she wrote the words and the music and stuff, so, like, also. <laughs> I mean, even, even back on Stronger Than You, True. Uh, like you gave me all these incredible references and so right at the beginning of writing all the musical songs I, I went over to Estelle's home she, she wrote the raps though <laughs> that's, that's true I remember you, you asked at the time you were like do you want me to do it like you I was like no please don't do it like me please do what you would do but I mean it was good mm. no uh, it was incredible like just the opportunity and the chance to be involved um, as an artist as well as a writer. And then like the people that she pulled in, like you said, when we get together and have references, it was like, yo, and then I went and I found charts and I was like, ah, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, like, but what they came up with was so great. And I felt so honored to even be able to do it. The song, a great song to me is if you can sing it to a guitar, you know, and, and it be simple and it be timeless. And I think she's done that with all the records Everything. on this, right? Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I concur. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good job. All right. This is a really important one. What inspired Steven's new outfit? And, and did you ever consider maybe some neckwear to accentuate his neck? You know, like an ascot, a tie, a bolo. Uh, mm. Um, yeah. Well, Steven's new outfit was really inspired by Zach. Um, and I'd like to give a shout out to Zach, who's not here because he's traveling the world, and I hope he's having a wonderful time. Um, we miss.
miss you, Zach. We love you, Zach. Uh, but he has these incredible jackets. He would come in, like, and so many of them, too. Like, all, each one better than the last. He would come in uh, with these amazing jackets. And I was like, Stephen needs a jacket. <laughs> like, a really nice jacket because of Zach's incredible jackets. I feel like Dee Dee and I have been on, like, uh, you know, doing certain events with Zach. And sometimes they'll come in and we're like, where did you get this floral duster? And he's like, it's a woman's bathrobe. Like, and he's just like, rocking it. Amazing. He does talk rock about the, the woman's bathroom. Yeah, talk about dressing up day to night. I mean, I'm, yeah, just seriously. do this. Very fashion forward. Yes. Um, what, what was the process of getting Spinell's animation just right? I mean, there were so many amazing action, action sequences in there and so, were you collabing with other people? Can you talk a little bit oh, about that? Oh, yes, yes. Well, um, a, a lot of that is sort of from us on the crew just really uh, paying tons of attention to the way that she moves, but also some of her major sequences. Uh, M Mickey Brewster boarded other friends. She's a, a genius. Um, and Jeff Liu bo uh, storyboarded Change. And then we got the chance to work with uh, Takafumi Hori. Uh, we got some fans in the house. Uh, on both of those sequences, and he's a brilliant, brilliant animator, and you can see his work just shining in the movie. And it was really fun to talk to him about like 30s, old 30s cartoons, and just uh, what we wanted to do with them, and the way we wanted to make sure that that it's scary the way those old cartoons are scary and and visceral. You know, back when entertainment meant like a bat like just comes at your face and then flies away. Like that's, you know, that was that was the bar yeah. at the time. And I just I find that stuff so fascinating. So we really wanted some of that energy in there. Uh, yeah, I personally, I would I hit all the scenes where her eyes rattle around like googly eyes. So if you ever see that happen, that that I did the keys for that. Ooh, ooh. Okay, talk about, so, so there are a lot of hidden gems also in this, so these collaborations, but there's one oh. song that Pearl sings um, when she gets rebooted and it's called system backslash boot dot Pearl final parentheses three parentheses dot info. <laughs> Rebecca, what? <laughs> I want to know too. I was curious yeah, to yeah. see if that was a. Well, I worked really closely with Sarashu on naming that particular track um, because we wanted it to be accurate to a, a, an actual sound file. In this case, it's a reference to the Amiga, and, uh, which is what the dot info is. And the three refers to when you say that you're done with something, but then you keep, you're like final, final, two, oh. final, final, three. Like you just keep, you keep fixing it. And it's like, okay, now this one's really the final. I have so many documents on my desktop that are like, the real final, 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 the real, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. That's so funny. Yeah. Oh man. All right, you guys, swell discussion. That was beautiful. Um, I want everyone to know another important announcement. It's just a really seamless segue here. Um, Steven Universe, The Tale of Steven Book, will release this Tuesday, October 8th. And great news for all of you with interwebs because you can pre-order a copy on barnesandnoble.com today. So log on in. All right, should we hit the special treat? Yes, yeah, we have something, we have something to show. Um, can, I, can I set this up? Sure. All right, so I'd just like to say, I know everybody has been waiting for more information about Steven Universe season six, um, but I have to tell you that, that there is no season six, but there is a Steven Universe epilogue limited series which is coming very soon, and we would like to show you something from it. We, we are in the future.
That was like an animated mic drop. You just <laughs> did it. Thank so, you so much to everyone who asked the questions. I'm so sorry we couldn't get to everyone. Yeah, but. Thank you so, so much for coming. And I really hope, I really hope you'll enjoy Steven Universe's future. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, New York Comic Con. Thank you. We'll see you guys in the future. Right. <laughs>